Welcome to the Folktale Project. This is Dan Schulz. Today we'll have our final African folktale for the week. And it's not an Anansi tale, I'm sorry. I ended up focusing a bit more on Nigeria this time than I had really expected to as I read through some of the stories and uh, became pretty fond of them. Next time we head to Africa, or perhaps when we head to Jamaica. Either way, there will certainly be an Anansi story in the near future. But for now, this is Elphinstone Daryl's Concerning the Hawk and the Owl. In the olden days, when Afyong was king of Calabar, it was customary at that time for rulers to give big feasts, to which all of the subjects and all of the birds of the air and animals of the forest, also the fish and other things that lived in the water, were invited. All the people, birds, animals, and fish were under the king, and had to obey him. His favorite messenger was the hawk, as he could travel so quickly. The hawk served the king faithfully for several years, and when he wanted to retire, he asked what the king proposed to do for him, as very soon he would be too old to work any more. So the king told the hawk to bring any living creature, bird or animal, to him, and he would allow the hawk for the future to live on that particular species without any trouble. The hawk then flew over a lot of country, and went from forest to forest until... At last, he found a young owl which had tumbled out of its nest. This the hawk brought to the king, who told him that for the future he might eat owls. The hawk then carried the owlet away and told his friends what the king had said. One of the wisest of them said, Tell me, when you seized the young owlet, what did the parents say? And the hawk replied that the mother and father owls kept quite quiet, and never said anything. The hawk's friend then advised him to return the owlet to his parents, as he could never tell what the owls would do to him in the night time, and, as they had made no noise, they were no doubt plotting in their minds some deep and cruel revenge. The next day, the hawk carried the owlet back to his parents and left him near the nest. Then he flew about, trying to find some other bird which would do as his food. But as all the birds had heard that the hawk had seized the owlet, they hid themselves, and would not come out when the hawk was near. He therefore could not catch any birds. As he was flying home, he saw a lot of fowls near a house, basking in the sun and scratching in the dust. There were also several small chickens running about and chasing insects, or picking up anything they could find to eat with the old hen following them and clucking and calling to them from time to time. When the hawk saw the chickens, he made up his mind that he would take one, so he swooped down and caught the smallest in his strong claws. Immediately after he seized the chicken, the cocks began to make a great noise, and the hen ran after him and tried to make him drop her child, calling loudly with her feathers fluffed out and making dashes at him. But he carried it off and all the fowls and chickens at once ran screaming into the houses, some taking shelter under bushes, and others trying to hide themselves in the long grass. He then carried the chicken to the king, telling him that he'd return the owlet to his parents, and he did not want him for food. So the king told the hawk that for the future, he could always feed on chickens. The hawk then took the chicken home, and his friend who dropped in to see him asked him, what the parents of the chicken had done when they saw their child taken away. So the hawk said, They all made a great lot of noise, and the old hen chased me. But although there was a great disturbance among the fowls, nothing happened. His friend then said, As the fowls had made much palaver, he was quite safe to kill and eat the chickens, as the people who made plenty of noise in the daytime would go to sleep at night and not disturb him or do him any injury. The only people to be afraid of were those who, when they were injured, kept quite silent. You might be certain, then, that they were plotting mischief and would do harm in the night time. And that is Concerning the Hawk and the Owl 
a Nigerian folktale gathered for us by Elphinstone Dale. And in it we see a hawk and a wise hawk decide what the future of his species will eat in peace and wisely giving up the owl because we all know that the owl, well, he holds quite a grudge. This is Dan Schultz for the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can also follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, anywhere that you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Next week, we'll be heading off to one of my favorite regions in all of folklordom, the Philippines, where we'll hear not one, but two origin stories and get a chance to kind of compare the two. So until next week, as always, thank you so much for listening.